Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the 2017 Flexible Packaging Awards. Excited to be here with you today. My name is Mike Richmond and I'm VP of Consulting Solutions for Javi. We have over 150 entries in 75 packages uh, that we've been working on over the last couple of days. It's uh, just such an exciting time for me to be here. We've, I've done this, I think, now five or six times, and uh, there's so many new things going on in and around Flexibles. So over the next two days, uh, we're going to work across all the different category areas to come up with uh, a number of winners. And I've got to tell you, it's going uh, to be a hard, tough time for the three judges. I'm Eric Fish, the editor of Flexible Packaging Magazine. I'm pleased to be back judging again this year, and like Mike said, I'm amazed at the innovation and technology that we continue to see in packaging. And I'm Bob Kimmel. I'm director of the Center for Flexible Packaging at Clemson University, and I'm also pleased to be back again at these competitions. This is my third time as a judge, um, and very happy to see, in addition to all the industry entries, 13 entries from students studying packaging around the country, and we'll talk more about the innovation and creativity represented in these packages. What's interesting for me is I think this is a year of more. If I think about it, there's more innovation, there's more sustainability, there's more non-food, there's just sort of more holistic solutions, there's more student activities, and I know we want to talk a little bit about some of those because it, it really has been a very exciting uh, judging contest and what we're going through just is phenomenal. Yeah, and just some new uses. A lot of products that were conventionally packaged in rigid containers moving to flexible, which obviously helps with the sustainability aspect. Moving into personal care, more healthcare products. Uh, it's been a really eye-opening experience. And our first reaction when we took a list and an overview of all the packages was how many were entered just in technical innovation, which is very unusual for this competition. And as we look at the innovations that were put before us, we saw a big focus on materials, on challenges that face the industry like replacing barracks, challenges of making the best use of seven to nine layer blown film technology, and combining that with the thousands of options for different polymer variants that are now available to the film industry and to the converting industry. And what they've come up with is some very creative and cost-effective solutions to some of the problems facing the industry. Yeah, I'd agree. I think a lot of these, Bob, they sort of expanded the category. They looked at the sustainability more holistically where they tied in technology and, and technical innovation and so I think it was really tough for us when we got down to the packaging excellence and highest achievement is trying to put all that together to come up with the winners. It, it's certainly not an easy chore, right? Not an easy chore. The students, Bob, you kind of teed it up in, in the intro, but the future certainly appears to be very bright in the packaging industry. We had 13 entries, just some really cool things, uh, all-in-one on-the-go diaper packaging, uh, kind of neat drone packaging for drone delivery, a shampoo pouch, some innovative new packaging of wipes, really neat stuff. It was tough to narrow that one down, too. Yes, it was. And in the sustainability area, we're moving away from just trying to lightweight to find real solutions for sustainability issues. We're starting to see in this year's competition a focus on food waste. How do we reduce food waste? How do we use flexible packaging to reduce food waste? And that's a very encouraging sign. I expect to see much more moving in that direction in the future. Yeah, I think the other thing we saw as we looked at all the packages around us is there's a focus not only on convenience, but more and more consumers are buying experiences and solutions, and flexibles are really standing to that effort. The other thing that we haven't mentioned yet is what we saw in the healthcare area, yeah, especially in medical point. device packaging. And the converters that are supplying that industry are really bringing some innovation, both to reducing the materials, to using materials more effectively, and to solving particular problems. I think that's just great. Yeah, and it was small scale and large scale in that regard. It was things as small as stitches and, you know, and things as large as more intensive medical supplies. So it was very neat to see. 
you know, all the way from doing a simple stitch to operating table kinds of things, recognizing the importance of sterility and one-handedness. And again, that's the, the solution and the experience. They're starting to understand what's going on with the customers, not just the consumers. I'm just floored with all the different kinds of innovation that we've seen and how they've rolled technology into helping with convenience, helping with performance, helping with sustainability. That certainly made our job really tough, trying to come up with a list of winners, that's for sure. Yes, it did. And you mentioned before this transition from rigid to flexible, which of course we love to see. But this year seemed to be a focus on how you use flexible technology to avoid shipping water and to avoid shipping rigid packages around the country. A huge impact on shipping costs, which means a huge impact on sustainability, uh, reducing carbon footprint, and all of those related factors. Yeah, that's a good point because with flexibles, you get away from a rigid package, so you have 13 less trucks coming in, you have only one truck, you've got better inventory storage, those kinds of things. So again, it gets to that cascading and more holistic look at it. There's a lot of new opportunities to be had as, as you think about flexibles in, in a bigger, smarter way. Yeah, and above all, it's practical. That's the big thing, too. It's not like this is going to inconvenience the consumer in the long run if they you know, adopt this rather than the conventional packaging. It's very practical. Okay, you know, as we wrap this up, a couple other things came to mind. I've got companies of, of all sizes participating in this, and I think they've all won awards. We've got more global than we've ever seen, I think, in the awards, and obviously uh, a lot more non-food kind of participants. Eric, any, any comments on that? Well, I think that's a great point. Uh, just off the top of my head, obviously, we have a lot of U.S. entries, but we also have entries from Canadian companies, from Indian-based companies. And like you said, while food is maybe still the king of packaging applications, we're seeing it move into a lot more markets. Yeah, so it certainly expands the category. Bob? We saw packages uh, intended for global markets in, I don't know how many different languages. One package had about 16 languages just on the one package. But this is a global business, and we're taking solutions that are developed in one market and applying them to another market, and that's exactly just what should be happening. Yeah, and we're seeing the reach go up. We're seeing quality go up. So it's great to have all the different kind of participants uh, in, in the program and, and being able to judge against it. Certainly makes our job tougher, but it's what it's all about, trying to, to help where we can in flexible packaging. Well, thanks, guys. I'm enjoying working with you. Let's get back at it.